Okay, so this is obviously a very silly video if you watch me regularly, primarily because you already know how I memorize everything <laughs> in medical school. But the point of this video is actually going to lay out the foundation and structure as to how I go about learning concepts and memorizing them. And not just like, you know, showing you, oh, here's exactly how you memorize. Because I think brute memorization is actually the stupidest way to do anything. But I'm going to show you the, the way I go about learning a concept, getting into my head, and then ultimately using the resources at my disposal, like Anki, to solidify them. So let's do it. All right, so let's get started. Here is a short presentation about how to memorize literally anything and everything, because this will apply to medical school, this will apply to undergrad if you have midterms in undergrad. So just use this strategy because it served me well in undergrad and it also is serving me well right now in medical school as I've taken my board exams and done decently well. So the overview of how to memorize everything is actually a three-fold approach that actually applies any time, right? And the way I'm gonna structure this talk is I'm gonna pretend as if I'm studying for a test primarily because I know a lot of you watching this video will have some tests that you're probably working towards. So that way this will be the most understandable. And I'm going to pretend like it's a six week test, like you're going to have six weeks of material and you're going to have a midterm at the end. Regardless, the entire process behind learning everything you need to learn for that test is going to be a three pass theory. And the first thing in this three pass theory is the exposure. So you're going to always need to learn the concept first. And what I mean by that is you're going to need to watch a lecture, you're going to need to watch a video. Let's say you're learning about, I don't know, um, equilibrium constants, you're going to need to learn about what they are. So for that, you're actually going to need to go to a lecture and understand the concept first. And when you actually watch that lecture and understand the concept, you will now make flashcards next to that lecture. And this works all the time because you don't just want to be taking notes. You also want to create a resource that you can refer back to and be like, okay, what do I learn? So while you're watching this lecture, make sure you're taking notes or making flashcards. And you'll be doing this step pretty much throughout the six weeks, right? Because if you're doing six weeks of material, you'll have to be making new content and new flashcards for the whole six weeks. But that brings me to my second step, which is the fact that as you make these flashcards, you need to review them. You need to try to do them every day. So that way, even if when you're on week four, the lectures from week one, you're at least still hitting those concepts. You can still see those flashcards you made and be like, oh yeah, this is from week one. I remember that because I made this flashcard about that concept. So by having those flashcards there and doing them, as you're going through the six week process, you'll actually be able to revise the material. So that's why I say here, usually I do flashcards pretty much throughout uh, while I'm studying for a test, but almost always I will like backload a lot of them. So let's say I make a bunch of flashcards. It's okay if you don't get through all of them in the first few weeks because the most important part will be to do them a lot in the end so that way you synthesize the concepts. Which brings me to my third point, which is synthesize, synthesize, synthesize. The questions that you're going to see on an exam are never going to be fact-based. They're going to require you to bring together a lot of, you know, discrete, inf discrete pieces of information. And so that's how you should study. If you've gone through the material once, right, step one, if you've then gone through and reviewed that material by doing flashcards, then the third thing you really need to do to put a bow on the top is to do practice questions that bring together a lot of these concepts. And by doing that, you can actually be ready for the test because you'll be like, okay, cool, I learned all these things, I know all my facts because I did my flashcards, but now I need to see how these flash facts can come together to make difficult questions. And the only way to know that is to do questions. So whether it's a midterm you're prepping for, I'm sure you'll have practice midterms. If it's USMLE that you're prepping for, you have to do Q World. You have to do U World, but you also have to do question banks, right? And so the whole point is in that third step, which usually happens in that last week that you're studying for a test, um, you really want to bring everything together. So you want to finish all your flashcards. You want to do as many practice problems as possible. You want to finish all the practice midterms. And by following three through these three steps, I've done them throughout my undergrad and now through med school. And I can tell you almost inevitably, I have never failed a test. And by that, I mean, I've never really gotten below a, like a B plus. So this really does work. And you just need to understand that this is all based in the theory of how the brain works. Information initially starts in the hippocampus. It stays there. But if you don't revisit it and you don't hit on it over time, it actually doesn't move to the frontal cortex, which is where long-term memory is. So by doing flashcards throughout your studying, you're actually conveying that memory from the hippocampus to the frontal cortex, which is where it can stay for long-term um, retention, right? And so that way, by the time the test comes around, you'll remember things much more quickly. And that's the whole aspect behind this theory. So now I want to just go ahead and show you how this works. 
by actually showing you an example of each of these three steps in action. So as you can see here, I'm actually partaking in the first step, which is I'm watching a video about a concept. And this concept in this case is polymyalgia rheumatica. And as I'm watching uh, the video, which is shown on the right, I'm actually also making flashcards, which are shown on the left. And as I'm making these flashcards, I'm making them in a question and answer format, and I'm also attaching screenshots from the video so that when I actually have a question, I actually can refer back to the same video that I got the question from. This may actually be one of the most tedious things while you're studying, but it should be tedious because this is the first time you're seeing the material, and so it's really important that you invest the time and the energy to make good flashcards that you can refer back to later on. More importantly, if you don't get the concepts down this first time, the next few steps will not be good for you. Like you may not even remember the big big things that you're supposed to remember because you tried to rush through this step. So just remember that when you're doing this step, which is focus on making sure you get the details. This will be the most time consuming step, but almost always it's worth it again make good quality flashcards. Make your flashcards in a question and answer format. Make sure you include enough supplementary info so that way when you refer back to them in about six weeks, you can actually understand the whole context. And that's often why I attach screenshots and make sure my flashcards are very detailed because it's much better to be extra detailed than not detailed at all. And that's kind of what I'm showing you here. Now let's move on to the next step where I'll actually show you how I go about reviewing these flashcards. And by reviewing them, you can then move on to the third step after that. Okay, so now let's move on to step two, which is now you take the flashcards that you made and you do them every day. Obviously, this is a very simple uh, step two because <laughs> uh, I only made 10 flashcards, but for you guys, this would be accumulation of however many flashcards you make over six weeks, and you would try to do them regularly. You don't have to do them every day, but maybe even doing them on the weekend. So now I'm gonna just show you, I made those flashcards on Anki. Let's just go through them together. The MAC molecule on, and the good part is, I'm gonna go through these relatively fast, but you also see that when you make your own flashcards, you remember them so much easier, right? Like you remember them much more easily. I am really, really, really an advocate of making your own flashcards. It will save you a bunch of time. So now let me just show you uh, I go through these fast, primarily one, because I'm really familiar with Anki, and two, because I made these flashcards, I'm going to be very good at remembering them. So MHT2, and not to mention, I already know everything about polymyalgia rheumatica. I just did this as an example, but let's just get through it. Uh, dendritic cells have uh, class two because it's antigen presenting cells, HLA subtype, DR4, um, polymyalgia rheumatica, the pain is from the tendons around the muscles, not the muscles themselves, that's why the CK is not elevated. Um, the prodrome for giant cell arteritis, which is temporal arteritis, uh, polymyalgia affects females more. That's actually true of most autoimmune diseases, they affect females more. Um, does polymyalgia rheumatica inf uh, improve with exercise? It actually does. Um, CK is uh, not elevated. Uh, treatment is low dose steroids. Uh, CRP is increased. Mm -hmm. ESR is also increased and MHC. So now I'm just going to go through them again. I already know all these. But notice that I go through them quickly. And um, you'll see that I almost always, if you look at the bottom here, you can pick um, again in one minute or again in one day or again in four days. However, I usually just do again in one day because by doing it again in one day, I can just see it tomorrow. I almost never press this because as much as I like to think I'll remember it in four days, I never do. So I just go one day and I just follow the algorithm. And so basically you would now do this step over and over again, right? So in your six weeks, you would do this hopefully in week one, week two, week three, week four, week five, and then in week six, you would really amp it up because you have a lot more flashcards at that point. And you also want to make sure you understand all of them and how all the pieces come together. Now for step three. Step three is actually the most fun step if you did steps one and two well. Step three is all about synthesizing, and almost always it'll happen in about that last week before a midterm, uh, or in med school, a med school test, or in, in terms of a board exam, you know, one week before the big board exam. And what I usually try to do in this last week is, one, go through all of my flashcards, and not go through them like fast, but go through them in detail, really make sure I understand the concept, really make sure I'm like, okay, this is literally everything I need to know. And that's that's actually reassuring, right? That you have all the flashcards that you ever made about the concepts that you need to know, they're right there. And all you have to do is review them and make sure you know them. So that's reassuring because now I know by doing those flashcards, I have everything that I need to know in front of me. So I'll go through all my flashcards. The next thing I'll do is review all like the lectures, right? Every now and then I'll kind of just go through all the lectures really fast. But the most important part will be the question banks and the practice midterms. You now want to spend that entire last week doing as many questions as you can, doing as many practice midterms as you can. Because by doing these things, you will now be applying your knowledge. And no test ever really tests on comprehension. All tests 
tests on application and understanding. So by doing as many questions as you can in that last week, you'll be summing up phase one and two and bringing it together in a way that is actually, I can't even describe to you um, how great of a process it is because I honestly feel I've done this so many times and when it's executed well, it actually is really fulfilling. That last week is actually really fun because things will come together for you. Things will start clicking. You'll connect a concept from week three to a concept in week one. You'll connect the concept from week four to a concept in week two. And that's where all of the test questions are going to come from. So this third step is actually vital, but it won't work if you don't spend the time to you know make sure you've got one and two. So with that, I'll end the video. This is literally how I memorize everything. You have my formula right there in front of you, and I memorize a lot of things, right? Like I have 40,000 plus cards in my Anki deck. So this works for me every time, and I hope it helps you, whether you're an undergrad, medical student, whoever you are. Um, so with that being said, thank you all for watching. If you have any questions, link them below. We'll make more videos like this, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace. Oh, of course. Yeah, like, comment, share, and subscribe. Please. Thank you. Bye.